This Sunday, with infections still running high, how ready are we for a new variant called Omicron? Omicron does have some features that are concerning, namely that it appears to be more infectious, though that's still being determined. As we wait for answers, we'll hear how local hospitals are preparing for the winter ahead. Plus, after the chaos fleeing Afghanistan, refugees now arrive here, tired but thankful, to begin their new lives. And it's quite a story. So some of the folks arriving here who may have wife and kids back home or parents back home, who may be on a target list of the Taliban because they are connected and because they did help with the U.S. military forces. Good Sunday morning, everyone. I'm Stuart Ludbetter, and this is NBC5 In-Depth. A lot of new concern this week about rising COVID-19 infections even before the Omicron variant moves in. Public health leaders say they don't yet know how serious the variant might be, and they won't for at least several more days. But some Vermont hospitals are already struggling with a surge in patients. In Montpelier, state leaders said they're scrambling to expand inpatient and intensive care beds. 84 Vermont patients were hospitalized as of Wednesday. That is a new pandemic high. Hospitals in Bennington and Rutland are caring for about half of them. Some nurses describe a system now at a critical point. In terms of ICU beds, one additional bed is available at Southwestern Vermont Medical Center. The University of Vermont uh, Medical Center will also add five additional ICU beds and we will continue to work with Central Vermont Medical Center and Northwestern Medical Center to bring additional beds online. That was the Scott administration at midweek. The new models see no decline in Vermont COVID cases for the month ahead. And again, the impact of the Omicron variant remains unclear. The health commissioner said he's working with FEMA and others to supplement hospital capacity. So what is the situation our hospitals are facing? and preparing for. This morning, our conversation with the man in charge at the University of Vermont Health Network. Dr. John Brumstead, welcome back to NBC5 In Depth. Thank you very much, Stuart. I'm very happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. So I gather non-essential surgeries uh, in Burlington are now on hold through the end of the year, uh, but you have found some additional beds. Uh, that's what we were hearing from the state this week. Yes. And, um, you know, this has been uh, ongoing uh, since the uh, beginning of the pandemic. We've worked really hard at the UVM Health Network and our hospitals in Vermont, and Northern New York to actually, against some very significant headwinds, to increase capacity for those that need it the most, whether it be inpatient beds or uh, critical care beds. And recently, the state of Vermont has come to us and the New York uh, state uh, a little bit less directly to ask us to increase uh, our capacity uh, for uh, critical care patients. And so at the uh, UVM Medical Center, uh, we have taken a part of uh, where people recover from their surgery uh, to convert that into five intensive care unit beds, ICU beds. And at Center Vermont Medical Center, we've actually increased um, the three ICU beds. Um, but I want folks to know, Stuart, that that's on a backdrop of months of increasing our capacity for emergency care and inpatient care. And that's actually one of the three pillars of the access plan that we put forward uh, over the past couple of months. Are you ready for uh, Omicron? Uh, can you handle much more? Um, uh, that's a very good question. Um, we will do everything, everything we need to do to meet the needs of our communities as far as the most acute care needs. The Omicron situation, I have to say, I just don't know, and nobody knows. You've heard on the news, you've even reported that we hear from sources that it's gonna take our uh, scientists, our epidemiologists, the CDC, others, 
several weeks to understand how much protection the current uh, treatments provide for this variant, how much our current uh, vaccines uh, protect us. Almost certainly there will be some protection. It could be excellent coverage. We just don't know that. And I just say that the vast, vast 90 plus percent of the cases in our country and in our region today are the Delta variant. And we all know the, uh, our treatments and the vaccines do a good job there. We'll just stay on this and do everything we can to take care of the sickest of the sick. And you know, the point is that is gonna have uh, impacts, uh, negative impacts on access in other areas like um, uh, straightforward doctor's appointments and um, maybe some of the uh, routine outpatient uh, uh, procedures and imaging that, that people need. We just have to put those on hold now so that the people that normally provide those services are uh, our great resilient workforce as they shift to care for other people in these sites that we're setting up. Yeah, that was a, that was a point that uh, Northwestern Medical made uh, a few weeks back, that they have to shift. Uh, so l l let me ask you about staff. Uh, how are they doing? Uh, you don't have enough. You, you've been upfront about that all year, really. And you've had to hire a lot of traveling nurses at great expense um, to cover uh, those gaps. A how much have, have you spent on travelers so far this year? Um, I don't have a specific number, uh, but just in round numbers, um, uh, network wide, so that's our uh, areas in uh, northern New York and Vermont, we would traditionally spend about $2 million a month uh, across our whole network on travelers. Um, we're four or five times that uh, per month in uh, uh, August, September, uh, uh, and October. Um, so we're in the uh, nine, ten million dollar a month range. So it's significant, um, and but that's one of those things that um, uh, we have to do to maintain that capacity. There are healthcare organizations around the country that have found that it's just too hard to do that uh, financially, operationally. And we hear of our colleagues around the country faced with these issues, actually closing units and reducing the size of their emergency room. We've done the opposite. And that, um, that really speaks to the, our mission. We're going to take care of you as, as long as we possibly can. So we'll take our resources to do that and our people are incredibly resilient. They're doing things that they normally um, uh, wouldn't be asked to do uh, in their uh, typical daily routine, and they're stepping up to do that. So all of that is to have more capacity and to ensure that we have the capacity that we have safely staffed. We heard this week that, um, well, we saw that hospitalizations for COVID had reached a, a pandemic high in our state. Uh, half uh, were in either the Rutland or Bennington hospitals. At your facilities, what's the breakdown between, you know, uh, COVID and non-COVID uh, for your inpatient? Probably what I looked at yesterday um, uh, and last night is totally different than this morning. <laughs> but we've been running at the Academic Medical Center where we have, um, you know, on any day, 430-ish uh, inpatients. Um, we're running uh, uh, in the uh, 20s uh, that would be COVID. They do take significant uh, care and isolation. So part of what we're doing as we're uh, increasing at the Academic Medical Center in Burlington, as we're uh, increasing uh, the number of ICU beds, we actually have created a 10 bed dedicated COVID unit for some of the sickest of the sick COVID patients um, that might not uh, normally go to the uh, ICU. And we've actually set up, people have probably heard about the monoclonal antibody infusion. Uh, we've actually set up a space in the medical center uh, specific to uh, do those infusions. So setting all this up and safely moving the staff to 
um, uh, staff those different sites are why those staff aren't available to do those routine surgeries. Um, and yes, we do have to add travelers on the top of that. So just from what you just heard me say, you can get a flavor of the complexity yeah. of actually making this happen, happen really safely and, uh, and really well. Uh, I have one minute. You're a physician. Uh, you've seen what COVID does to your patients. Uh, what do you want to say to people who just don't believe it? Uh, I, I can't even bring into my consciousness that people wouldn't believe that COVID exists and is uh, as serious as it is. Wear your mask if you're anywhere in close proximity, particularly indoors. Wash your hands and um, please, please get vaccinated. Take advantage of what um, uh, we have uh, to offer uh, so, that, so that we can move yeah. past this and get back to what we do best, which is just to take care of you all when you need us. Dr. John Brumstead, CEO of the University of Vermont Health Network. Thanks for your time. Uh, thanks for being with us on NBC5 In Depth. And thank you so much for the opportunity, Stuart. It's really important for you all to help us get the word out.